asking God is important. It's important for us. Um, Jesus said, God already knows what you need before you ask him. And we know that God loves us and wants to provide good gifts for us. He wants to provide what we need and be gracious and generous to us. But asking's important still. That shouldn't be any reason, clearly, why we shouldn't ask. It's beneficial to us and it's helpful to our relationship with the Lord. Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, made this point and he made this argument, one of these uh, arguments that Jesus makes that was common in the time, at the time where you say, if this is true, then this is really true. And so you, you know, you get, you get your audience going, yes, that's, that's true. And then, then you throw a really good truth at them. And so that's what he uses when he said, if your child asked you, if your son said, can I have a piece of bread? Would you give your son a stone? If your daughter said, can we have fish tonight? Would you serve snake? And of course you wouldn't. Of course you wouldn't. As, as a loving parent, as a co-creator, as someone who has taken responsibility for someone to raise them, to provide for them, we want to do everything we can do to give them what is good, what is good for them. Our, our kids will ask for some things that, that aren't necessarily good for them, but we have this desire to fulfill what's good, to give them good gifts, to give them what they need. And so Jesus makes that point, and we say, yes, that's, that's absolutely true. No one would do that. All, all parents, all people would do that in caring for, for a child or someone they're responsible for. And then he throws them, well, if that's true, then your heavenly father, how much more would he? Because you are humans. You are evil. You're flawed. You're flawed humans. And though you know how to give good, give good gifts, so how much more your heavenly father, a flawless, all-powerful, loving parent, the ultimate creator, how much more would he want to give to you? So why don't you ask him? And that's a strong point, isn't it? Why don't you ask? Mary Reed has mastered the daddy. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on to your billfold. <laughs> we can do that. We can do that with God. If we desire healing this year, then we're going to need to ask for it. I hope you've been asking for it for this body and for yourself. And it's helpful to be specific. Where do you want God to heal you this year? We should be thinking about it. This is a year of healing for us. We need to ask for healing. Asking for, for help, asking for healing, asking is important. In fact, there was a study in the counseling world and they were trying to find out how much, um, w what each piece means for the total picture of, of the healing, the value of the counseling process. And they actually found through this study that half, 50% of all the value of counseling, all the healing that can happen, that can potentially happen through the process, happens when the person or the couple walks in the door to the counseling counselor's office. 50% happens right there. Now why? Well, they've, they or the person has decided that they need healing. They've found some help and they've made an appointment and they've showed up. It, essentially, they've asked. And so asking is 50% of the healing right there. So it's very, very important David was an excellent asker, and we're going to see that in this psalm. This is just the first verse of Psalm 57. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me, for in you my soul takes refuge. 
I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. This is Psalm 57, and in the title of the psalm, it's one of those that attaches it to David's life story. It says that this is a psalm, a song of David when he was fleeing from Saul, hiding in a cave. And we heard from Dad last week, he pointed out that this was a 10-year process for David of running away, of hiding, of, not, of God not fulfilling his promise when he was very young, when Samuel came and anointed him king in front of his seven jealous bigger brothers. And so this was this stage, it was the desert stage for David, and he was doing a lot of asking. And I envision him playing a stringed instrument around the campfire with, with the gang that, that was with him, supporting him. His, his brothers came and supported him and other um, malcontent, discontents and runaway priests and, you know, this hodgepodge of people that uh, David accepted in a Christ-like way, come into my family, come into my protection, come be with me. And so I may not be king yet, but one day you shall see that I will be. Very Christ-like. And so I can just imagine David singing these asking songs, playing the guitar around the fire, the harp, whatever, whatever it is. It was stringed. And in um, and, and singing these songs and healing the hearts of those who, who were saying, probably after a while, why do I have to drag my, my family around this desert, David? When are you going to be king? And David said, well, let's sing an asking song about that. Let's, let's sing to the Lord. Let's ask him. And so he's our teacher today in how we can ask God. David's going to show us. And one of the great contrasts between David and Saul is that David always asked, David asked, Saul didn't. David would ask God, and Saul would never ask God, or kind of ask God, or not really. And so when David was running from Saul, in, in our story this week that you read in your reader, which was uh, 1 Samuel 23 and 24, he's running from Saul, he's out in the wilderness, and he hears that the Philistines are attacking this town of Keilah, which is on the boundary line between, it's, it's actually, it's an Isra Israelite town. Israelites are living there. It's on the boundary between Israel and Philistine, and Philistine. So the Philistines are coming in, and they're attacking, and they're attacking the threshing floor. So it's, it's when they're taking their provision, they're taking their grain. And so what did David do? Well, he heard this, and first he inquired of the Lord, what should I do, Lord? And God said, go attack and save Keilah. And then David went to his, his group, his men, and said, okay, let's go. We're going to attack uh, Keilah. And they said, you know, we're already being chased by Saul. We're already an enemy of Saul. This is really Saul's business, protecting Israel. You know, you're not the king yet. Um, and we already have Saul as an enemy. So now... You're gonna, now we're going to have the Philistines as an enemy as well. So I don't know if this is such a great idea, David. So what did David do? Did he listen to them? Well, he went back and he asked the Lord again, and there's nothing wrong with that. He asked the Lord again, and, and the Lord said, Go, and I will give them into your hand. And so he did, and he led his men, and they saved Keilah. And then Keilah's provision was saved for them. And then David, God provided for David's people in that when they plundered the Philistines, then they were able to take livestock, and so they had, they had food for themselves, provision for themselves. And the key is that David, the key here, the key lesson is David asked before he acted. He asked because only God knows what's the right thing to do. Timing is so important, and only God knows timing. And only God can give us victory. So we need to ask. We must ask. In contrast, Saul was very foolish about asking. He rarely asked or waited for an answer. We see back in chapter 13 of 1 Samuel, uh, Samuel said to him, Saul, wait for me for seven days, 
I will show up on the seventh day and I will make a sacrifice for you. And then you can go into battle. As the Philistines again were attacking. And so Saul waited and he waited. And then the seventh day came and Samuel was late. And so Saul went ahead and made the sacrifice himself. And Samuel showed up soon after and said, What are you doing, foolish man? And then in chapter 14, the, again with the Philistines, and then Saul brought the ark along with him, brought the ark into his camp right outside of the battle lines because he wanted God's presence. And he also brought a priest who can then tell him, along with the ark, what to do. And so it sound, sounds like a good idea. And so then it sounds like he might be listening. But oh no, he wasn't listening. So what happened was he's sitting there and then he hears this tumult, this, uh, this chaos in, in the Philistine camp. And it was because Jonathan had snuck away secretly and, and God had blessed Jonathan's effort. And so he was causing the Philistines to go into chaos. And so Saul had the priest right there with his hand over the ark asking the Lord. And Saul said, withdraw your hand. I'm going into battle. Withdraw your hand, he said. I don't want to hear what the Lord's answer. I have my answer. It looks like things are going well for us. So let's, we can't waste any time asking the Lord. Let's run into battle. And so, and then in the story today, the people of Keilah, they betray David, their savior. And so after he saves them, then they send word to Saul and say, hey, we've got David over here, Saul. And then Saul immediately interprets, immediately says, without asking the Lord, God has delivered David into my hands. Is that what he thinks has happened? That was his interpretation. Didn't ask God about it, just declared, he's delivered me. And was it God's will? Of course it wasn't. He didn't ask. And this is what people do. This is what we do. If things are going well, we don't even want to ask, do we? <laughs> Things are going well. I'm not going to ask God anything. And we like to interpret God's will on what we want. Seeing rainbows in the sky and saying, oh, she loves me. You know, <laughs> God's telling me. If it's going, if, you know, we, we let circumstances, people, events, Tell us what God's will is instead of asking and listening to what he's going to tell us. It was not God's will that Saul pursued David. In fact, he then had David cornered. He went and pursued him, had him cornered on a mountain. And then at that point, God intervened and said, sent word, sent a messenger to Saul to let him know, listen, the Philistines are attacking. We have to take this army and take them up out of here and go after the Philistines, and so David was saved. So the lessons for us today in asking are ask before acting, wait patiently, and only listen to God. And it is, I, it's my experience that, that when I do this, then God's abundantly clear. If I ask on whatever situation, it, you know, God's God's willing to uh, make all our decisions for us as uh, little or big as they seem to us. And a lot of times they seem real big to us, maybe small to other people, but God wants to be part of that. And when we submit, when we truly submit, he knows our hearts. He knows when we've truly given it up. That can take a while. When we put our personal desires aside and then we patiently wait, he makes his will very, very clear. Sometimes it's not what we want. A lot of times it's a, it's a slammed door in our face. But we see over time, wow, that was God's will. He gave me my answer. And boy, was that the right thing. Boy, was it the right thing for me at that time in my life. Gosh, it was even the right thing for those people around me. Yet we still often resist. We know that that's, we've, we've, I hope you've had that experience. Yet when the next issue comes along, we often don't ask. David tells us why we should ask. This is verses 2 and 3. I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. 
me. He sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hunt and pursue me. God sends his love and his faithfulness. Why should we ask God? He fulfills his purpose for me. He saves me. He vindicates me from injustice. He demonstrates his love and faithfulness to me. David is saying this while he's in the desert. See, David sees. He's already learning. He's going to be a good king because he's already learning to ask what God's will is, to ask the Lord. He already knows all the benefits of asking the Lord. Someone recently um, brought up the idea of meekness to me in a discussion and, and um, said, why, why does the Bible tell us to be meek? Why, does Je why would Jesus say that? Uh, meek is uh, not something someone should be. They need to stand up for themselves. They need to be strong, right? Makes sense. And I said, well, you don't really understand what the word meek in the Bible really means. It doesn't mean weak. It means exactly what David is doing here. It means asking in submitting our will to the Lord, asking and finding out what the Lord's will is. And if you think that's weak, you're absolutely wrong because it takes a lot of strength to put, our, put aside our impulsive, selfish desires. I think one of, one of the problems a lot of us have is we just want to get our list knocked out. Amen? Anybody else? We just want to get this done. Yes, we're addicted to checking off, marking out, and saying, got that one done, got that one done. And sometimes we uh, have, the, the Lord has no space in that. We need to relax. And that's hard. To wait and be patient, to hear God's voice. To silence the trendy advice of humanity. To trust in God's wisdom, his plan and purpose for us, and to follow his instructions. These things take strength. To be meek is to be very, very strong. And one of the Psalms that we read in the reader this week is Psalm 37. This is 10 through 11. A little while and the weak will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy great peace. And this is verse 34. Wait for the Lord and keep his way. He will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you will see it. David did uh, make a mistake, and that's the beauty of, of looking at David's life, is we see the whole thing, not just, the, not just his triumphs, but his errors and his learning process along the way. And he did, when, when Saul went into the cave to relieve himself, and they're hiding back in the cave, and the, the guys are going, David, God has, see, again, not asking, God has delivered him into your hands, go get him. So David grabs a knife and... and creeps up quietly behind Saul. And instead of killing him, uh, God maybe stayed his hand. He cut off the, the corner of his robe and then let Saul go. But when he did that, af after he did that, it says he was conscious stricken. He was cut to the heart because he realized, I just did this very impulsively. I just listened to these men. I did not take time and ask the Lord what he would have me do. And so he learned this process. So David teaches us, we make mistakes like that. And, and thankfully, God is extremely, extremely forgiving and merciful to us, isn't he? But we need to learn. We need to wait and ask and see what the right thing is. And our, our asking is, is good for our relationship with God. It's not only that, you know, we tend to think, oh, you know, if we ask, then we get what we want. Well, no, <laughs> no the asking is this whole, it's, it's this whole part of the process of trusting him. It's good for our relationship with him. It's, our asking is opening up. It's opening up our hearts to him, our emotions. Yeah, say, why is this and, and why is that? That's, that's a good thing to ask your, your heavenly, loving, caring father. Go ahead. He wants, he wants to hear about it. 
Tell him about it in the good times or bad. Asking is part of our relationship with him. David expresses his difficulty constantly. He's always expressing what's going on in his life. We have a wonderful counselor who's all ears. Here David expresses his difficulty in, in this psalm. This is 57, 4 through 6. I am in the midst of lions. I lie among ravenous beasts, men whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, let your glory be all over the earth. They spread a net for my feet. I was bowed down in distress. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. David's only request here, he's, he's, this is an asking psalm, but then he's, uh, and he's expressing his difficulty, but then his only true request is, be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your gl glory be over all the earth. And really what this prayer is, and it, it's the same as the, the Lord's prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, the line, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's, that's a good prayer. That's, that's what to ask when we don't know what to ask, isn't it? We're not sure. Often, I mean, really, if we're, if, if we're wise, we go into situations knowing, I'm not really even sure what to ask for in this situation. I just want to lift it up to you. Thy will be done in this, on earth as it is in heaven. May this, may this be like heaven. May this be gracious. May this be your will. May this be within your kingdom is what to pray when we're not sure what to ask for. And then the, in the remainder of the psalm, David is strengthened, and, and that's a, a beauty of many of his songs, being a good songwriter. He goes from distress to worship, and that's a wonderful way to lead us. This is 7 through 11. My heart is steadfast, O oh God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. Awake, my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love reaching to the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. See what asking can do for us? When we put it in the Lord's hands, we're strengthened and we can praise him and worship him. Even though we're still in the desert, we're still running around, we, we still don't see our king on the throne just yet. And I had the thought, David's, David was writing all these beautiful asking songs during this phase of his life. And I wonder if he had any idea that here we would be 3,000 years later singing those songs, he, being healed by those songs, being part of the asking process that we would ask the Lord in the same way using his beautiful songs. And so let us do that. Let us do that in our hearts, in our time with the Lord this morning. Let us ask him for healing.